This is the Huion Canvas Studio 16. And if you're looking at this thinking, hey, isn't that the Surface Pro? You're not alone. Huion is jumping into the world of Windows tablet computers, and this is a really great entry. Hello, my name is Brad. I review tech for creative professionals, and I have to say, this might be the best product that Huion has ever made. And understandably, it is going to get a lot of comparisons to that Surface Pro. I think another device that's worth comparing this to is the Wacom Mobile Studio Pro that came out a few years back. Another thing worth pointing out is while the Microsoft Surface Pro is a phenomenal product, it's not designed for illustrators. It's more like designed for everybody and illustrators can also use it. And that may seem like a fine difference, but there are some tweaks here that make this, I think, a better product than the Surface Pro for illustrators. First off is the actual size. This is a 15.8 inch screen. And while it's not as nice as say a, a Surface screen, which has 120 Hertz refresh rate and a higher pixel density, it still looks phenomenal. The screen itself has 100% Adobe RGB. It is fully laminated. It does have an anti-glare etched glass coating on it. And it is a 2.5K display. That's 2,560 pixels by 1,440 pixels. But being a little bit larger than a Surface Pro, you get some benefits there. For example, many of the drawing programs that you might be used to using, whether we're talking about Photoshop or something like Clip Studio Paint, or even Krita, have a lot of interface elements that can be kind of hard to hit on one of those smaller screens. By boosting this up to almost 16 inches, it becomes it becomes very, very comfortable to draw on. We have an 11th gen Intel Core i7 processor, comes with 16 gigabytes of RAM and 512 gigabyte SSD drive. There's a five megapixel front facing camera, an eight megapixel rear facing camera, and even some amenities like a fingerprint scanner on the power button. Like a lot of portable tablets like this, there's not a lot of IO. Basically we have two USB type C ports, one of those you're gonna need for charging. For artists and illustrators, the biggest selling point here is Huion's pen. It is fantastic. I'm gonna do a deep dive into that later in the video, but I think that is a core thing that's worth highlighting here. I had mixed feelings when Huion announced this. On one hand, I was excited that they were doing it. On the other hand, I thought, okay, this is their first stab at something like this, so I wasn't sure how the quality would be. In some ways, I think it's very good when we're talking about drawing quality, the screen quality, the overall build quality, it's really nice. There's some other places where you can tell they've cut some corners. For example, the speakers aren't great, but they did include a headphone jack. The hinge isn't especially sturdy. Like you can set it up at any angle you want, but if your hand is resting on it, it's, it's gonna slide down to a fairly actually comfortable drawing position. When I first took this thing out of the box, I was a little confused because there was an extra stand in the box. What am I gonna do with that? But after playing with the hinge for a little bit, I realized that if you want to draw on this on anything other than its most basic down position, which is actually pretty comfortable to draw at, you are gonna need a stand. So having one in the box is, is a nice touch. One thing I did notice is that since this is a computer and not just a screen like most of Huion's products, is that it did get really hot. You have a processor going underneath there. So you're using it. You're going to feel that heat. But most of that heat is contained in the upper half region of the screen. I would say in the upper left center-ish quadrant. That's not too bad. Your hand isn't resting there when you're drawing. So your hand isn't going to be resting on the hottest part of the screen. Your hand is going to be resting on one of the cooler parts of the screen. The other thing you are going to notice since this is a computer is there is a small fan inside that is blowing out much of the heat that it is producing. And while you can't hear the fan, it's just a small buzz. It's not super loud. It doesn't sound like an aircraft taking off. Now, one of the core benefits to one of these all-in-ones is its portability. And that's where I think there, there's a couple things to weigh here. First of all, it's it's kind of heavy. It's not really heavy, heavy. It's, it's about 3.7 pounds. There were several times when I go to pick it up with one hand and I realized, oh, this, this weighs more than a surface. I need both hands to pick it up. That makes me sound like a total wimp. It was more about the size and the weight distribution than anything else. As far as battery life goes, I was getting between three or four hours, probably closer to three when I was actively drawing. Now, one thing to note is this is not customizable. So the RAM and the storage you get is pretty much what you get. Now, the other thing to think about is a cover or a keyboard cover like a Surface Pro 
has one, this doesn't have anything like that. There's not even a, a connection for that. So you're probably going to want to use either Bluetooth keyboard or something you can plug in and use if you're going to be using this as your primary computer. Now, in the time that I used it, I thought, okay, yeah, let me just try and use this without a keyboard for a few days. And I, I got by pretty well. I think that's more of a testament to Windows 11 and how far that Windows has come in the last four or five years to anything else. But overall, I, I had a pretty good time with it. I wasn't writing scripts on it or anything, but just navigating the web and getting my stuff plugged in, it was fine. Since this does have a Mac coating on it, which is great for drawing, it is something that I would worry about getting scratched, especially if you're gonna be sliding this into a bag. If you have a really soft bag, it might not be a problem. Otherwise, you're probably gonna wanna find some kind of secondary cover or something like that to put on something like this. Now, what about drawing? This is using Huion's pen. And if you've been around here for a while, you know I, I am a fan of Huion's pen. I think it's almost as good as what Wacom is producing today. Now, oftentimes when I get a new device, whether it's the Samsung laptop that I reviewed a few weeks ago that comes with a Wacom powered pen, or whether it's a Surface device that I mentioned earlier, it takes me some time to get used to the pen and get used to drawing on the device. Every pen that you use just has a learning curve to it. It's not that they're bad, it's just that you have to get used to the way they feel. That wasn't the case here. From the moment I picked up that pen and started drawing with it, it just felt absolutely natural. I think that's the main reason I really took to and loved this product from the get-go. If you've ever followed a drawing tutorial and thought, what am I missing here? What they're drawing there looks nothing like what I'm drawing here. Don't worry, you're not alone. This is the exact same thing that I was running into when I was learning digital art just a few years ago. In fact, it was around some of those things that I created my new intro to digital art course. We go over things like how to take your sketch and turn it into really clean line work, how to color that in efficiently, how to pick the right colors that you want to use. I spend time talking about different styles of brushes and how those are going to create different effects and then we go through them. If you'd like to learn more, there's a link down below in the description. Check it out. Find out more about the course. Anyway, back to the review. This also comes with Windows 11. Now, if you watched my Canvas Studio 24 review last week, you know I ran into some problems. So I bought both of these devices from Huion, and when they both arrived, neither one had Windows activated on. I did have some problems with the Canvas Studio 24, where the code that it came with did not work for activating. And so they sent me, Hui on support sent me a new code and that didn't work either. They had to remote into the machine in order to fix it. Here, I didn't have that problem. I was able to just hit the troubleshoot button and it automatically activated Windows for me. So that's great news. That seems to be, I've talked to two people who have had these and they've had a similar experience and they haven't had any problems. So hopefully that Canvas 24 Studio that I picked up was more of an outlier than anything else. Now, the pen that it comes with comes in one of these, these neat little pen slider holdy things. And along the back of this is where it contains some extra nibs. There are three normal plastic black nibs, but there's also three of their felt tip nibs. And I haven't played with the felt tip nibs that much, only here or there. But what I noticed here is this pen actually comes default with a felt tip nib in it. And I really like the feel of this thing on that matte screen. It provides just a little bit more texture. It's probably gonna wear out faster, but it feels so good that I'm okay with that. When I first started taking this through my pen test, there were a handful of things that I noticed. The, the first thing was is that I had to go in and calibrate the display. This is something that was super common, I don't know, four, five, six years ago when I first started testing these. Like the pen tip almost never lined up with the cursor and you were always calibrating the display several times trying to get it to be a little bit more accurate. And that's pretty much what happened here. I haven't had that happen to me by default on a Hui on display in, in quite some time. So it is something that could be fixed, but you might have to fiddle with yours just a little bit because my, my cursor was like, I don't know, two or three pixels up and to the left. And that went with several things. I love using Adobe Fresco on devices like this, but I really wasn't impressed that much with Fresco on this, even though Photoshop was fine and Clip Studio was fine. I got a lot of check marking on many of my really fast lines in Fresco. I could find it if I really looked for it in Photoshop and and Clip Studio, but it was much harder to reproduce that sort of pen inaccuracy there. I was also trying to get some wobble on the pens, like with long diagonal slow lines, and I could find it if I went looking for it, but in just everyday drawing, I thought it was great. I did mention the Mobile Studio 
Pro earlier. I haven't talked much about it up to this point. One of the things that that device has that, that this doesn't are keyboard shortcuts right there on the front of the display. To remedy that, Huion also included this, this little key dial mini remote, which is which is nice. It just plugs in via USB-C. You will need an adapter because this is a USB type A the thingy mabob. You basically use that to charge this and then it works via Bluetooth wirelessly after that. It's nice, it works well. So up to this point, everything that I've mentioned is a pro because honestly, I think for a first try at a Windows tablet, Huion pretty much nailed this. There's some ways that Huion could improve on it. Like they could improve the speakers, they could improve the camera, but since this is an illustration device, I think the parts that they nailed, like the screen, the feel of the pen, those things, they really did those well. And most of the problems that I ran into were quirks with Windows, not necessarily quirks with the hardware. For example, the virtual keyboard kept turning itself off. Overall, I felt like it took the device about two seconds too long to turn on. Sometimes you'd hit the power button, you'd be like, did that work? And then you just, when you were going back to do it again, it would spring to life. I think it'd be cool in future iterations to see them add some way to add my own storage, like some kind of little card that I could pop in there if I wanted more than 512 gigabytes. This price is also starting to get out of the realm of affordable, something that Huion has always done. But I think if you look at this compared to other laptops or other foldable laptops or Surface clones, I think it's right there in terms of price. Obviously the Surface Pro is cheaper, but it's also smaller. And if you wanted to get it with bigger specs, something more akin to this, you're gonna pay more for that anyway. But what do you think? Let me know down below in the comments. Thank you all for watching, and I'll talk to you in a couple of days.